we're gonna keep this party rolling. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are ready to go. And the next speaker we have coming up, he says he's not a living legend because he's only in his 20s, but that's okay because he's living legend in my mind. <laughs> and this guy, you might know him as Not Your Average Lender. If you're not following on Instagram, definitely follow him there at Not Your Average Lender. He has over 13,000 followers on Instagram. And uh, he's also the creator of the brewery, uh, brew, brewery, like basically brew re. Okay. It's a local event currently in Long Island, but soon coming to the nation yes. that you might be able to do it yourself. Help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Eric Braun. What's going on, Eric? Nothing much, man. I, I, uh, it's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, first, I, I want to give it back uh, to the speakers that spoke so far today. We got Greg, Sam, Karen, um, just really, really valuable information. I think we can all agree. And um, I also want to give it back to you, Nick. I, uh, you're one of those people and, and you realize this. I, I realize this because I do this in my business. You're one of those people who are always going above and beyond what you're actually called to do, right? Um, you don't have to do this live event. You didn't have to organize this thing. I know this is like back, back breaking labor and, and I know a lot of people are getting a lot out of it. So I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody who spoke so far. Um, yeah, being a living legend, I, I, I don't know if I've, if I've ever been called that. Um, so I appreciate the compliment and it's an honor to be here. Yeah, no doubt, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that you're here. You know, and the reason is, yeah, you know, obviously you've already spoken at a couple of my other things and you're just awesome, man. Your, your content is really good. You're, you're a doer. So it's not like you're teaching something that somebody taught you or, you know, um, right. you know, some idea or some strategy. It's like, you can just literally look at what you're doing in your own business. And so, yeah, man, I just appreciate your input. So what, how can people be more like you, you know, um, the things that you got going on, you know, maybe some, you know, what, what do you got for the people? So uh, the, what I'm going to be talking about today, and, and I'm, uh, <clears throat> I normally don't take notes. I don't do PowerPoints. I, I kind of just rant, kind of Gary Vee style, if anybody know who that, who, who that is. Um, but what I, what I would like to talk about today and, and what I've experienced in my business, right? You talked about a, being a doer, right? There's, there's a lot of cool talking points going around right now. Social media is one of them. Branding is one of them. But to actually implement it and see results in your business is a lot different than just talking about it and maybe selling a course on it, right? So uh, what I'm gonna be talking about is, is actual results that I've seen in my business, actual strategies that I believe any loan officer could implement and see results immediately. Um, first, a little bit about me, just so you can understand who's, who's here before you today. Um, I've been in the business four years. I've been licensed for a little over two. I started in this business. I don't think anybody has ever grown up and, and said while they're growing up, uh, I'm going to be a loan officer one day. So I kind of, I kind of fell into the industry. Um, and I'll tell you that story. So uh, basically before, before I got into the industry, I was, I was a struggling 20 year old. I, I was lost. Yes, that would make me 24. I am 24 years old. That's important to mention, I think. Um, but I was, a, I was a lost struggling uh, 20 year old. Um, I couldn't hold down a job. I didn't really have any purpose in my life. I was depressed. I, I wasn't fulfilled. And, uh, I actually met an individual, uh, that was, was successful. I didn't know what he did. Uh, I, all I knew was he drove a brand new Audi and that was like goals to me, right? Uh, I'm a big Audi guy. If you get to know me, that's one of my things. I, I love cars. So I saw this individual and he was driving a brand new Audi and we immediately connected and he asked me what I'm doing for work. And I said, uh, I'm not doing anything. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm looking for a job. And he said, why don't you come be my chauffeur? And I thought he was, I thought he was being serious, but come to find out he didn't have a chauffeur. He wasn't that rich. Right. Um, but for two or three weeks he was saying, Oh, why don't you come drive for me? Why don't you come drive for me? And I kept telling him, like, when can I start? I'll start tomorrow. Like, that was a dream job for me, being, being a chauffeur, right? Just to give you a good idea of where I was at. Um, so one day he's like, you know what? I'm just kidding. Come to the office. I, uh, I got a real job for you. I filled out an employment package. 
and there I was. He threw me on the phone and I started telemarketing. That was, that was my first two years in the, in the mortgage business. And, and I'll tell you right now, it wasn't, it wasn't a pleasant experience. I don't know anybody who's, who's done any cold calling in their life um, could, could understand where I'm coming from. I think if, if you've ever done any cold calling, let's, let's put that in the comments, like your experience on it. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up right here. Yeah. So <clears throat> Um, it wasn't a pleasant experience, especially for a 20 year old that's lost, hopeless, no purpose in his life. His first real job, they threw me on the phone and here I am calling for nine hours a day or whatever it is, uh, getting hung up on left and right. So that was my first two years in the business. And the reason I go into all of that is my first two years in the business, I wasn't sure that this is what I wanted to do, right? And at some point you need to make a decision. And my story, there's a, there's a lot of key, key points and, and principles that you can pull from it. But the first thing I would like you guys to, to take note of is you have to make a decision, right? So at two years into, the more, in, in, into my mortgage career, I said to myself, you know what? I, I, I started asking myself like life's most important questions. And if you never asked yourself these questions, please do this. It will, it will change your life forever. I started to ask myself, why am I here? Right? What, what's my purpose? What do I truly love? Right? And when I boiled it all down, it, 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 it's really people. All I, that's, that's the only thing I truly, truly love is people. Right? So I, I, I took note of that. Right? Uh, the next thing, the next thing that I did is I, I looked around me and I, and I asked myself, what do I really want? Um, and I looked at everybody around me in my inner circle, whether it be my parents, my friends, anybody, right? And I looked at everybody's life and I said to myself, they don't really have what I want, right? I, I, I want more. I want more out of life. I don't want to be in a relationship that, you know, I really hate my significant other. I don't want a job that I don't want to be at. Like all of those things were unattractive to me. So I said to myself, I'm, I'm going to defeat average. And that's where my brand started. It was some, it was deep soul searching, right? It's not just a tagline, right? It's, it's, you need to do some soul searching. And I think that's where the best brands come from. So it wasn't, it wasn't not your average lender out of nowhere. It was, I'm going to defeat average in my personal life. And then I said to myself, whoa, 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 wait, I'm going to defeat average in the mortgage industry. And now I'm going to be not your average lender. And my mission statement is to remove average from real estate by adding value to consumers and real estate professionals. Then I started to nail down my value proposition um, for referral partners. But I'm, let, me, let me take it a step back. That's, that's kind of the story behind how I just arrived at not your average lender. So when we talk about building a brand, right, um, we've all heard the 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 topic of becoming a celebrity in your marketplace, positioning yourself as a celebrity. Um, and I think it comes from a key principle that in, in any business, this transcends industries is attention is extremely important. Attention is, is everything, right? If you have the, if you have a restaurant that has the best food in the world, but you're the only one that knows about it, you're going to fail as a restaurant. If you're a loan officer that has an insanely valuable thing that you bring to the industry, um, the way you service clients, the way you service, uh, the way you um, build realtor relationships, if you, if you have value to add, the only way you're going to be successful, forget that, right? If you don't have the attention, you're not going to be successful. So I said to myself, all right, if, if I want to serve the most people, I have to be where most people are. And that is social media. How do we gain attention? Branding, right? Now, the question is, how do we make a, a good brand? So that's what I'm, the first thing I'm going to touch on today. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not that big of a notes person, but I wanted to do this right. Um, and I did, I did uh, write some notes. So you may see me look to my left and that's, that's what I'm doing. So just some accomplishments that I've been able to uh, have in my business uh, from implementing these strategies before I go over them. Uh, I was voted top 40 under 40 in the, in the country. Most, most influential mortgage professionals, uh, like, like, uh, Nick mentioned my IG following, I've been speaker, I've been a speaker at, um, 
events across the country. I'm talking Boston, Miami with Nick, which was an amazing time. Uh, events here in Long Island. Um, and then I, we also started the, the brewery event, which our last event had, I think, 140 people attended. Um, and this event that was supposed to happen on March 31st, we had 240 people register, and I think we could have broke 300, but obviously we had to postpone it because of what's going on in the world. Which, by the way, if you're, I know in New York, we're getting hit very bad. So shout out to my New Yorkers. Um, shout out to any, any, anybody that's going through this. We're all going through this together. Um, and speaking on that, this is a perfect time to build a brand. I think Renee said it yesterday. Renee Rodriguez, who is incredible, right? Um, I've, I've actually attended some, uh, one of his masterminds and I, I leave the, uh, I left a change person. Like you can't go to one of his events and come out the same, right? I, I went to one of his events and, and incredible experience. But anyway, he said yesterday that the brand that you build right now is going to follow you for many, many years. And I could not agree more right now is a perfect time. Like I was just mentioning, most people are on social media now more than ever. Like it, it was, it was a lot of people before now everybody's on social media. Everybody's constantly looking. So if you're building a brand and putting out content during this time, it's only going to help you. It's only going to help you. I don't care if you're, I don't care if you can't do a loan, you know, below a 700 credit score and you know, below a 20% down payment. If you're putting out content right now, maybe not, maybe don't talk about that, but if you're putting out content right now, that's valuable. You're going to win. You're going to win. So how do we build a brand? Uh, I think the best definition of brand that I've ever heard was Jeff Bezos. And he said, uh, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room, right? You already have a brand. I want to, I want to be very, very clear. You already have a brand. You have to ask yourself now, now that you're becoming conscious of it, which is one of the other principles that I, I want you guys to take away from this is you have to be conscious about your message, the content you're putting out there and who you are as a person, because that is your brand. And as soon as you're conscious of it, you can start to tweak it in ways where you're going to see more results. But you have to be conscious that you already have a brand. Now you have to ask yourself, what, what is that brand, right? Um, what brand do you have right now? And what brand do you want to have? And how can you bridge the gap, right? Uh, now, well, like I said, I think the best brands start with some deep soul searching. So ask yourself those questions. You know, who are you? What do you love? What's your mission statement? So for me, I love people. Um, and my mission statement is to remove average from real estate by adding value to consumers and, and real estate professionals. Um, every brand has a mission statement, right? And it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be that, that, that long thing that I just said, right? Nike, just do it, like Renee said yesterday. You know, um, all state, you're, you're, you're in good hands, right? So every there's, there's the brand and then the mission statement, make sure you can nail down both and make sure it's authentic to you. Right. Um, now after you build your brand, your mission statement, your mission statement kind of piggybacks on your value proposition, right? So my value proposition, and, and this is the thing, all of these things, one without the other, don't equal the best result. You have to have all of them, right? You can have attention, but no value proposition. You can have a value proposition with no attention. They, they both have to be present. So our value proposition or my value proposition, and bef let me take it a step back. Before you identify your value proposition, you have to identify your target audience, right? I want you guys to, I want you guys to change your mindset on the way you market on social media. Um, this was one of the biggest paradigm shifts that I had that has allowed me to see success in my business using social media and the strategies that I'm going to go over shortly. I'm not, I'm not on social media to get borrowers. I'm not on social media to get customers. I'm on social media to get referral partners. Very it because the odds of a random person finding me on Instagram, even with my following, yes, it has happened but it's usually through somebody that referred over, which was going to happen anyway. But the odds of somebody coming to your Facebook profile, friending you and saying, Hey, can I get a mortgage are very, very slim unless you're doing some sort of paid advertising. So I want you guys to market to real estate agents, right? There's, there's, 
I, I forgot who, I, I think I was listening to a podcast. If you were, uh, I think they used um, flower salesman or something like that. But let's, let's just go with that. If you were a f- flower salesman and you, your quota was to sell 100 flowers a day, you may be able to, to accomplish that maybe two days, right? But after a while, you're going to run out of people to sell flowers to. Now, if you change your mindset and you say, I'm not going to sell flowers to people, I'm going to sell flowers to supermarkets, to convenience stores, to the 7-Eleven, which I don't know if you guys have that if you're outside of New York. The, the, uh, I forgot what the, what the other the other uh, 7-Eleven type store is called. I, I forgot. But if you change your mindset to start selling flowers to people who are constantly running into people that may want to buy flowers, right? Focus on real estate agents. You're going you're gonna to be able to sell 100 flowers a day a lot easier if you do that. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if, if that makes sense. Um, so if you switch your mindset to that and you identify your target audience as real estate agents, you need to now come up with a, a value proposition. My value proposition, just to give you guys some ideas, and it's, it's gonna change for everybody, right? And, and this is something that has to be specific to you. This, is, this has to be truthful, this has to be authentic, right? Um, my value proposition to realtors is, I'm not, only, I'm, I'm not a vendor, right? I'm not only gonna close loans on time. The value proposition, by the way, is not, is not you know, uh, I close loans in three weeks, I have great rates, brokers are better, that's, that's bullshit. I'm sorry, that's all bullshit. Let's throw that out the window. Um, realtors don't, especially top producing realtors, realtors don't, if, if there's any realtors in, in here right now, I think, we've, I think you've all got calls saying, hey, I can close loans on time. That's not a value proposition, I'm sorry. Um, so after you nail down your value proposition to give you some ideas, this is mine. And this is what I tell real estate agents. I'm not only gonna close your loans on time, I'm not only gonna you know, offer your clients great service, you've heard that all before, but I'm gonna help you grow your business. Here's how I do that, right? Um, Nick, Nick's program is, is a perfect tool for that, right? Um, I, think, I think somebody spoke about it yesterday that Nick, Nick didn't go out there and advertise to the marketplace that he's gonna, He's going to help you get uh, borrowers. He's not, he's not going to only help you get customers. He's going to help you get real f- referral partners who are going to send you customers. Plus, his program is going to help you get customers of your own. So that's, that's the way you want to think, right? Um, let's, let's focus on the realtor's pain points like scaling and marketing. Like I can help with that. Technology, I can help with that. I'm not only a vendor. I'm not only a mortgage guy. I'm a partner in your business. That's my value proposition. My target, so there's my brand, not your average lender. There's my mission statement, removing average from real estate by adding value to consumers and real estate professionals. My target audience is mostly real estate professionals, whether it be builders, accountants, financial advisors, or realtors specifically. And then identify a value proposition. So now it's not only you have attention, you can actually convert the attention. Because it's one thing to have 13,000 followers. It's one thing to fill a room with 200 people. It's a whole nother thing to bridge the gap and build real relationships that are actually resulting in in closed deals, right? That's all all we want at the end of the day. I think we could all agree. Um, And and Nick, I have till 2 p.m., right? Yeah, and I saw I saw Sarah ask a question. I think this might be a good transition for you. Is she was like, "Can you give some examples on how you're helping realtors build their business? Like, is there any actual tangible? I mean, I get that, and, and obviously we I know that your realtors love you because I see them constantly talking about you online. And so, what are some like tangibles of how you're creating those relationships? So, um, number one, the the very basic marketing stuff, whether it be open house flyers, uh, they want to do mailers. Like, I'm I'm we have a really good marketing staff at, at my company that will design all of that stuff for us. That's really the basic stuff. Um, but then it it goes all the way down to my intake process, how I make sure to identify an actual purchase price and pre, uh, property tax range so that they can start off on a good foot and have more context to shopping. Um, so realtors aren't wasting time. Realtors do not like to waste time. So anything that you could do to stop them from wasting time, whether it's 
identifying and being very specific on, on monthly budget and here's where you need to be with your price range. Here's where you need to be with your property taxes. Let me know if you want to run numbers on that, on any houses that you look at, look at. Aside from that, not just which most people are doing, here's a pre-approval. Let me know when you get a contract, right? I'm a, I'm a partner all the way to, through and then even after, before and after contract or they go into escrow, whatever state you're in. Aside from that, um, all the way down to technology. So I, I've implemented uh, HomeBot in my business. I've, um, I've implemented uh, a lot of automated uh, milestone updates. So realtors want to know that you're going to be communicating. If you have, if you ask realtors, what is their main, what do they like least about loan officers? It's they don't answer the phone or they don't get back to me or it takes two weeks to let me know the deal's dead, right? If you just do that and make sure that a lot of, a lot of loan officers on this, on this uh, you know, live right now are very good communicators. They're doing all the right things, but they're not communicating to their referral partners the fact that they are good communicators. Like you need to know that and have that a part of your message when you're sitting down with a potential realtor. Like you may be implementing some of this stuff, but just knowing how to present it is going to be the difference between getting that relationship or not. Um, because I, I always, I, I'd like to believe the 150 people that are watching right now, that once a realtor does do a loan with you, they're going to be set for life. It's just about getting those first few loans, right? So making sure you nail down your presentation. I have a whole PowerPoint that I started implementing that goes over every single value add that I bring to realtors. Plus you can also implement Nick's program where you can, I, we, we, run ads for realtors and get them exclusive buyer and seller leads. Like that's huge. No other mortgage professional is doing that, right? You have to separate yourself. Your value proposition should, should separate yourself. Um, those are just a few things. I, I, like I said, I have a whole PowerPoint that I go through with, with a potential referral partner. It usually takes me like 20, 30 minutes. So that would take up a lot of my time. If you want to message me, and by the way, guys, if you aren't following me on Instagram, I'm going to be starting, I, I already started kind of with this new series that I'm putting together, which, I'm, which I'll uh, touch on. A lot of um, tips and, and strategy type content, like just giving it away, right? So if you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. Not only will you be able to copycat me, like with all the stuff that I'm talking about, uh, but you'll also be able to see the content that, content that I'm putting out on, this, on these exact topics. So just, I, I hope that that helped you out a little bit, Sarah. Um, now, after you nail all that stuff down, right? Because if that's your foundation, everything I went over so far, what are some actual strategies, Eric? Like, it, again, you can have the most polished Instagram, you can have a lot of attention, but that doesn't result in real business, right? So what are some actual strategies? And that's what I'd like to go into now. I'm gonna try and share my screen. Let me know if this works. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Yep, Can you? Good. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see the my Instagram profile? How does that look? Looks good to me. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay. So here's my Instagram profile. Uh, before I go into the strategies, I'm going to just talk about is how to set up your bio do's and don'ts, et cetera. Um, I know I, I pulled up the MGIC uh, PMI pricing. I know some of you guys are probably looking at, at that on a daily basis like me, but this is, this is what I really wanted to show you. Okay, so a few quick things about Instagram. And by the way, my strategies are completely the same Instagram and Facebook. Obviously, there's, it's a different platform, so there's little different tweaks, but I post the same stuff that I do on Instagram that I do on Facebook. It's the same thing. And both are incredibly, incredibly valuable. I'm not, I used to be very pro Instagram. I used to be, you know, the type that's, you know, I, uh, you know, Facebook is dead. I do not believe so anymore. I think they're both very, very good platforms. So some do's and don'ts. First off, uh, you want, you want to set up your bio correctly, very quickly. You want to put your location, what you do, right? Loan officer right then and there. Um, your, your mission statement, so your Nike, just do it. And then you could have a link tree with you know, your, your reviews and stuff like that, 
Um, but that, that's the very basic, some do's and don'ts. So if you see, if you see something, um, and, and let me know in the comments, what's one thing you notice about my profile if I'm scrolling through it right now? It's all about me. That's what a personal brand is all about. Guys, I don't post three and a half percent down FHA loans are available. I do not post anything like that. I post about me. That's what, that's what people are, are, are building relationship with you, not, not the programs, right? So, uh, some do's and don'ts or don'ts would be, you know, don't post the, the product highlight. Um, do post the stuff about you, whether it's a, a stupid little picture with, with no caption, right? Or something like this where I'm, I'm putting together now. Um, so I, I'm running low on time. So I just want to get into the, the strategies for you guys. I can talk about the profile and how to build that successfully and all that stuff. So some actual strategies that you can do. Um, first off, th this is the first thing you should do. Whatever marketplace you're in, do this. If I do Long Island real estate, right? This is straight from Gary V's handbook, guys. Something that you guys should do here. I don't think I can do it on the computer. Something that you should do right away is start following influencers outside of the mortgage industry and just copy what they do and just throw the mortgages in there. But basically what you want to do, I can't do it on the computer for some reason. Search your, you, you can not only search people's usernames, but you can also search hashtags. You want to follow your market hashtag, meaning hashtag Long Island real estate. I follow that hashtag. I like and engage on every post in there. All of my posts, I use that hashtag. So I become, I start to become trending in that hashtag. Um, like, comment, DM. Now, any, this is very, very key. Any realtors coming into your space, I, I always say if they, if they come into my space, they're getting a DM, right? Whether that be they like my picture, they comment on my picture, they friend or follow me, I immediately send that person a message. Try to take the online relationship offline. You don't wanna have a bunch of followers and no referral partners, right? Try to take the online relationship offline. So anytime, whether it be a loan officer or a real estate agent interacts with any of my posts in any way, I immediately DM them and, and try to pull that relationship offline, whether it be schedule a call or an in-person meeting. Now, real quick, um, reach out to the top influencers in your market, right? So I just finished up a thing uh, with the number one house flipper in Long Island. Uh, I'll stop my screen share. I just finished up a thing with the number one house flipper in Long Island. How I reached out to him is I saw he was organizing this event. I said, hey man, I'd love to donate, right? I'd love to, it was a charity event. I'd love to donate. I'd love to get on your podcast. Let me know, right? Went from completely strangers to now he's on, now I'm on his podcast. I, I build that relationship. He puts out content with me. And all of a sudden, I'm next to the number one house flipper on Long Island. So what does that do? It edifies me. Um, from that relationship, I've got, I think, I think I've closed two deals from him personally referred to me. However, I've been able to partner up with countless realtors because they see me next to him. So there's realtors in your marketplace that aren't closing business. Trust me. The people, the realtors who are active on social media, like have the best Instagram profiles aren't closing shit. Just let me, let me be honest. Now what's, what's either way you want to get next to those people because they're always down to do content, right? Whether it be you featured on their podcast or do a video or do a zoom meeting like this, record it, they post it, you post it. Now what happens? Your face starts to get out there. Another thing that you can implement right away is any referral, any pictures you take with your referral partners, make sure you're tagging that referral partners because then they're going to repost it. It's going to show up in their profile. I'm constantly tagging the people I'm doing business with. If I get a text from a realtor and it's like, thanks, man, I appreciate you working on this so quickly for me. I, I, you know, we got this done. Thank you. I'll screenshot that text message, post it to my story and tag him. What does he do? He reposts it to his story. Now other realtors who follow him because realtors follow realtors, other realtors who follow him, follow him, it's social proof. 
So constantly trying to tap into other people's network and sphere of influence by co-branding content is extremely, extremely valuable. I've turned relationship, I've turned pointless hour meetings with realtors who do not produce into many fruitful relationships. And I'm not talking about that specific realtor. Um, and just to wrap it up, right? What you should, one thing that you could do right now is put together a quarantine series, right? So this is something that I'm implementing. Uh, my, my series is producer plateau. You can completely copy the name. I don't care. Right. Um, if you, if you look at my profile right now, the first, the past few videos, I'm, I'm basically doing 10 videos. I go for, over topics and it, the whole purpose of the series is to help realtors push their business forward while in quarantine. Right. So that, that's what you talk about. I give them strategies, past client marketing, um, how to maintain a winning mindset, controlling the message, virtual tours, virtual bio consultations, do a five minute video on all of them, invite guests, right? You don't have to come up with the content, invite the guests, do a zoom meeting, record it and then post it. And guess what? The guest is going to post it to their profile and your name starts to circle around. And now, you become a celebrity in your marketplace. So if there's, if there's one thing that I can leave you guys with, right, before I go, because I know I'm, I'm, I ran out of time. You need to build a personal brand. It's not about your company. It's not about the programs you, you offer. It's not about the rates you have. It's not, about your, it's not about you being a broker. It's about you. Figure out who you are. Figure out what your, your mission statement is. Figure out what your target audience is. Figure out what your value proposition is and make sure all of your content has all of those pieces, you know, put together. So I hope you guys got something out of this. I'm, I'm putting a few things together for other loan officers. So if you follow me on Instagram, stay tuned for that. Uh, Nick, it's, it's been a pleasure. Uh, the next speaker, Brian, is a freaking animal. Um, so I'm, I can't wait for that. I, I appreciate you guys and, and it's always a pleasure. Thank you. What? What? <laughs> You know, it was a, a slow but steady incline, and I just wasn't sure what was next or how to take it to the next level. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Milo Draven. What I do on social media is I'm unapologetically and forever just me. You know, I got inspired. I joined Lolo, and for a long time, I was on the outside of the internet box that we're in, in, in the group and slowly but surely I started to feel like I belonged. Don't be afraid to show vulnerability. It doesn't make you gay, trust me. That's not it. It makes you human. And the more I became active in the group, the more my business grew because you get inspired by other people's greatness. So it, it's been a great thing for me.